Hey guys, so this is not the second video that I was going to drop today. I mean, it is obviously it's a second video, but this is not on the topic I was going to drop today. If you look over in the community tab of the YouTube channel, you'll see, you know, I was going to talk about the morality clause that Wizards of the Coast has got going into OGL 1.2. Uh, I still want to talk about that. Hopefully I can get to it tomorrow before the live stream. <laughs> Tomorrow's going to be really unpleasant if I'm being honest with you guys. And it has nothing to do with, with gaming or anything like that. It's just, just real life stuff. That's, uh, it's going to put me behind the eight ball, but it, 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 life happens, right? Life happens. Um, but I actually got the, the, this was kind of a, a news flash, if you will, from one of our Discord users, Sapphire Steel. Uh, and I will link to the Discord as well as this article below in the description. Look, I'm completely boomering the Discord thing. I don't know why the link doesn't stay permanent when you say your link will never expire. And then I put it in the video description and it expires. People like, no, that's not it. That, you know. If you want to join us on the Discord and talk about the show, the show's content, or classic tabletop RPGs, or join some classic tabletop RPGs that are getting started over there, I will provide a link in the description to the Discord that at the very least should be good for a week. And if it's not, yell at me in the comments or in the community and say, hey, I want a link to the Discord that works. This one doesn't. But uh, the most important thing that you can do right now is if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, and if you like the channel, please click subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications. It really, really helps. So let's go ahead and jump into this. This is actually from, who is this from? This is from CBR.com. That's uh, Comic Book Reviews. And we're going to take a quick look at them. They, they do cover tabletop gaming stuff. And once again, this is the OGL drama creeping in to everything, into every aspect. And wouldn't you know it, it's it's upset it, it it is it has really put some projects on their back heels and uh cbr brings us this so let's take a look at what they've done to these people so we're going to pop that up uh 10 rpg projects dramatically changed by dnd's open game license drama the latest Dungeons & Dragons open game license controversy has effectively thrown a wrench into several ongoing projects. And so uh, the last two, the last few weeks have been busy for the tabletop gaming community, particularly the Dungeons & Dragons community. You said a mouthful there. As a result of an announcement made by Wizards of the Coast regarding the open gaming license last December. It feels weird to say last December, but I, I'm a Southerner. We say this past December. Uh, in 2016, Wizards of the Coast released Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition under uh, version 1.0a of the OGL, allowing third-party developers to modify, copy, and redistribute some of the content and mechanics of the game. Now, I think they're selling it short. This is something, this is not something that happened in 2016, folks. Okay, if you're new to D&D, if that's when you started with D&D, and you want it, just like a, an ultra-quick update to this, TSR was awful, kind of like Wizards of the Coast is becoming, uh, with letting people publish stuff to do with D&D. When Wizards of the Coast bought TSR out entirely, they completely revamped that because they saw how awful TSR had been, and they said, we're not going to let that happen again. And they created the OGL. This was in 2000. So we're talking almost 23. We're talking nearly half the life of Dungeons and Dragons ago. It wasn't in 2016. In December 2022, however, Wizards of the Coast teased a few details and conversations. Is that what it was? Is that what you call that? A conversation? Well, surrounding the development of a new OGL version 1.1, one that would accompany the release of Dungeons & Dragons' newest 1D&D &D edition. No, they called it OGL 2.0. 
They did not call it a version 1.1. This new OGL, which was rumored to deauthorize uh, version 1.0a and be far more restrictive, triggered an outraged response from the tabletop community, pr prompting plenty of third-party creators to reevaluate their business relationships with Wizards of the Coast. It did that. Even if you guys missed a couple of serious facts, it absolutely did that. H has anybody got an in with CBR? Can you, can you maybe give a little fact update on this? The OGL was not 2016. This was not just a few years ago. All right. This is a decades, plural, old agreement with the community that set out to right wrongs created by TSR when TSR was in the clutches of people who didn't love the game and just wanted to squeeze a ton of money out of it. To avoid that happening ever again, and here we are. This is the nightmare scenario that OGL, the Open Gaming License, was created to avoid. Now this one, I hadn't heard of this one. I had not heard of this one, but this is... Look at this. Right off the bat, right off the bat. Something's getting pushed up onto the rocks. The Properties and Provinces Kickstarter by Dragon Crown, Dragon Crown Games is delayed. With the announcement and development of Dungeons & Dragons new 1 D&D edition, third-party creators now find themselves in an awkward situation. Just like yours truly, okay? Developing new content for 5e now risks becoming outdated depending on the time frame and reception of 1D&D and Dragon Crown Games. A homebrew publishing company has even announced a delay to their upcoming Kickstarter as a result. This directly impacts individual people, individual artists, and individual creators. They are being hurt by Wizards of the Coast. They posted an update to their Properties and Provinces Kicks project in November, announcing that they would be delaying the Kickstarter over concerns about 1D&D's rules and uh, system reference document, SRD. The ongoing drama between Wizards of the Coast and the D&D community will most likely extend their delay even further beyond what the developers had originally planned. Don't you feel good about yourselves, Wizards of the Coast? Who am I kidding? They don't feel anything at all for the small creator. The combat wheelchair is now moving to Pathfinder. That's an interesting thing I didn't know about. I mean, I, I had heard about the combat wheelchair. But uh, Sarah Thompson is taking all that material over to Pathfinder. She wanted that to be in D&D. She wanted players who, who's, they, they wanted their character representation like that to have it in D&D. So there you go, Wizards of the Coast. Good job. Ghostfire's gaming future products might no longer be for D&D. Ghostfire Gaming, developers of the Aurora Age of Desolation and Grim Hollow Valakan clans, recently announced on their website that the ongoing drama surrounding the OGL has caused them to make alternate plans for their future developments. Again, again, you are throwing a wrench into people's livelihoods, wizards. Well done. And this one, I hope this one hurt wizards. It, it, somewhat, other than just a PR bl black eye. The Rook and Raven, uh, excuse me, the Rook and the Raven withdrew all licensing negotiations with Wizards of the Coast. Now, they, the Rook and the Raven have, have played by the rules, all right? They have towed the line. Or haven't towed the line. They, 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 they've completely played by the rules here. They haven't come close to the line. They have been careful to avoid any terminology or language that would make use of any of the Wizards of the Coast intellectual property. So nearly all of its inventory remains unaffected by any changes to the OGL. But they're pulling out because they know it's a bad deal. And then, of course, we go on to talk about Paizo and the Orc Initiative, Chaosium... 
Call of Cthulhu, the whole BRP system, Pendragon, 7th Sea, they're pulling out and going over to the Orc. Green Ronin is supporting the Orc license. Legendary Games is supporting the Orc license. And this could directly impact my Monday night games and yours too, or Tuesday night, or Wednesday, or whenever you do this. Roll20's Orc support will likely affect VTT platforms. Let's read this one. Roll20, one of the internet's leading virtual tabletop platforms, was recently listed by Paizo as a supporter of the ORC in their growing community of independent publishers. Roll20 has maintained a long-standing relationship with Watsi, selling and utilizing licensed material to support online players. This announcement, while still in its initial and undefined stages, will likely change the trajectory of VTTs as a whole. Guess what? Right now, at least, if you go on Roll20, you're going to find classic AD&D character sheets. There's a drop down. My game is AD&D. It doesn't do much, but it gives you the proper looking character sheet. I mean, I don't expect him to go whole hog, right? They don't care about classic D&D. I get that. But somebody put that up there. It could disappear tomorrow. Thank you, Wizards of the Coast. Thank you so much. And of course, Cobalt Press is now developing Project Black Flag. My war. You say you're one of them. Give me a comment below if you know if you know what that's in reference to. A third-party publisher to be affected by the OGL drama, Cobalt Press, is one of the most notable. They have historically been one of the most popular and dedicated creators of independent RPG content, particularly for Pathfinder and 5th Edition, and are famous for their Midgard Midgard campaign setting. I, I don't I don't think that's I don't think that's right. Um, I mean, it's Midgard. It's oh boy and supplementary adventures in responses in response to watsi's decision of a new one more time in english in response to watsi's discussion of a new ogl cobalt press not only announced their support of paizo in the orc but revealed development of a new fantasy rule set rule set code name project black flag it's ongoing open subscription free and will be published under the orc license after its playtesting stage so I normally don't like to just sit here and read articles wrote like that, guys, but R-O-T-E, not W-R-O-T-E. But guys, anyone who's kidding themselves that this is not having an impact on small publishers, there's the proof, all right? Now, granted, Paizo is fairly large. Not Wizards of the Coast size, but compared to, say, the kitchen sink stuff that I do, or my buddies over at Hellebard Games, or even, you know, maybe a company like Frog God, they're, they're kind of kind of on the large size, right? It, it's, it's taken a toll on people. Some are able to rise to the challenge. Some have just had to put plans on hold. And here are some examples of it. Again, if you know anybody over at CBR and you can get a few of those things, because, uh, uh, yeah, there, there's there's a few er errors in there. Um, just just a few. Yeah, it's, it's Midgard, not Midgard. Anyway, yeah, if, if you if you could let them know, if you could let them know. But like all of us, they're in a hurry to get the news out there. Um, I will be back with a couple of videos tomorrow. I don't know what time. We will be having a live stream, the birthday live stream extravaganza. We'll kick it off at 7 p.m. And we'll talk about all kinds of fun things, uh, positive things. The live stream is the place for positivity. So... Thank you guys for watching. Again, if you like the video, leave a thumbs up on it. Please leave a comment below. Subscribe. 
click the bell icon for notifications, and I will see you guys around the way. Be positive, take care of yourselves, peace.